But quite frankly, why is that important to us? It's a complete uh, transformation from how a lot of us do our planning. Uh, as transportation professionals, we view the, the concept that everyone wants that individual freedom. Well, anymore, the millennial generation is looking at something and saying, hey, I'd rather have somebody else driving me. I'd rather do uh, the various modes rather than have to drive myself, which changes how the population base looks and, and how that entire transportation system is set up and designed. So these are things that we really need to think about for the future. We have to work together. Um, we've heard a great example example in Orlando. This wasn't an uh, overnight success that they've had in Orlando. Uh, everybody from the state, federal, and local governments, as well as the uh, our industry, whether it be our consulting industry or our contracting industry, and the private sector have stepped up to the plate to improve transportation in the Orlando area. This is exactly what we need to do here in uh, the Tampa Bay area. We need to look at our transportation system more regionally, and we need to figure out how we're going to make these connections and work together to make that happen to pool the limited resources that we all have uh, to, to make Tampa and the Tampa Bay area uh, the great economic power that it really can be. So this regional coordination is an absolute must. And uh, as I mentioned, it's, it's all about pooling those limited resources because quite frankly, if you look at what the federal government's going through right now, uh, I really believe that, that we are, as a state are gonna have to be more self-reliant and less reliant on, on federal sources out in the future. So implementing this vision, um, as I mentioned, the traditional government funding is, is going to be more of a challenge. Uh, we're going to be looking to more of the public-private partnership models, um, as Orlando is already doing. We're going to be looking for ways to bring uh, private investment dollars into the system. And it's also going to allow us to make these projects happen significantly quicker, as, as you heard Orlando also talking about. Uh, if, if we in the Tampa Bay area wait for the federal funding system to fund these projects, uh, quite frankly, sir, I will be with you. I will be in the nursing home with you, and we'll be waiting for these things to happen. And quite frankly, uh, that's not how Tampa is going to grow. It's not how we're going to become the economic power that, that we can be. We're going to have to start looking at alternative contracting methods. Uh, design build is, is a prime example of that. There's other alternative contracting methods that we need to explore, and we need to make sure that, that uh, those things are happening. And we're going to be looking at more public, uh, private finance type facilities. Uh, we have one great example here that's it's ongoing, you may or may not be aware of, um, from a potentially private finance facility up in Pasco County. Uh, we have an unsolicited proposal within our department right now that's covering from US 19 on state highway 54, 56, and they want to take that to US 301 as a managed land facility. That corridor up in Pasco County is extremely congested. Um, and the, the private side of, the, of our business thinks that there's a way to build this facility and make it obviously profitable for them. They would design, build, operate, and maintain the facility, uh, only leasing uh, portions of, the, of that order from the DOT, similar to what all of Water Florida is doing. So these are some of the things that we need to start thinking about. We need to start thinking outside the box and figuring out how we can uh, make these type of uh, systems happen. Everything is all about, it's going to be, have to be customer driven, however. Um, and when I say that, uh, it, you, you need the customers willing to step up and, and pay what it's going to cost to, to make that happen. Because the government financing side of it is not going to be sustainable long term. So in the Tampa Bay area, we're currently undergoing a managed lane study, uh, which it, or, or express lanes as they're talking about on, on I-4. And we have a complete map, which we'll be seeing here in a second, that uh, will be coming up that talks about how we can implement managed lanes to help improve traffic flow. We, we need pre premium transit options, whether it be a fixed rail, whether it be bus rapid transit. Uh, those are definitely systems that we're looking at that uh, we can transition. We don't have to try to do this all at once, but we can transition maybe from a rubber tire system to a, to a fixed rail system. But uh, in the end, we need to look at how premium transit options can happen. And we need to make sure that we have smooth modal connections, not only for people, but for freight. Uh, again, if we're going to be a competitive, competitive in the marketplace, it's all about making sure that we can bring the businesses in, but those businesses need to know that they can get from the different modes uh, successfully on time and basically move their product from point A to point B. Uh, a great example that the port is currently doing right now is, is the uh, Green Rail Express that they've got going on where they're going to be bringing products into the port, put their number of refrigerated train cars, and they're, they're promising their uh, both 
up in the Chicago area a certain delivery time every week. That's a great example of smooth modal choices that's going to be helping drive our economy in the area. As I mentioned, this is the, uh, the, the draft version of our managed link program here in, in the greater Tampa Bay area. Obviously, there is a lot of work on that uh, screen right there. It's the tune of close to $5 billion. So you think the $2.1 billion project on the I-4 Ultimate is, is quite a project, which it is. Uh, that's what you're seeing on the screen here. If we were to build all that out, try to do it all out at once, which is not very realistic financially. So we're going to have to find ways to implement a managed lynch program here in, in the greater Tampa Bay area. We're going to have to find ways to fi finance all this, and we're going to, have to figure out how we can implement it in stages so that it can be successful. Everything, no matter what we do, everything has to show success or the users won't uh, continue to come back to support uh, what we're doing. We're looking at uh, bold, innovative uh, technologies. Uh, if you haven't heard, the Tampa Bay Area is going to be holding the first autonomous vehicle conference in the state of Florida, which is November 14th and 15th, uh, at the convention center. Uh, why is that important? Well, uh, quite frankly, technology is our future. Uh, we need to figure out how we can use technology to be more efficient and effective with the limited dollars that we have. Um, it will allow us to change our uh, land use planning and our design standards so that we can more effectively utilize those dollars and quite frankly, it's also going to provide a new level of freedom for uh, our big boomer population. If you have an autonomous vehicle, and they, as, as we all grow older, because I'm in that stage, I can say that as we, uh, the reality comes that we're going to go a point in time where either you're going to have to rely on your family to get you to this, those doctor's appointments and, and to maintain your freedom, or hopefully the autonomous vehicle will, will be there for us to make that happen. There's also a change in how we're going to 